Oh, we're ready to print our um, design. The Canon laser printer. There we go. Well, let's cut the um, copper board to size. Well, shall we see how it's turned out? Right, it's looking okay, isn't it? Right. We'll clean that up. And we'll um, drill it next. See that? Okay, next stage is um, ready for its dip in the solution that removes all the copper that's remaining. Well, it should take about 20 minutes. This solution is very old, I've had this about 18 months, maybe two years. Mine's no longer this lasts. Right then, I'll see you in about 20 minutes. Well, it's been in there for over half hour. It takes a bit longer than it used to now, this stuff's worn out. I'll have to replace it soon.
No, it looks okay, doesn't it? That'll do nice. Right, we'll clean that off. And sand the toner off. Great. Well, here's the parts list. How many parts? I think it's 22 parts. No nine caps. Resistors. Battery connector, the antenna. The audio connector. And your trimmer. One coil. One single transistor. And a tie there just to tie the wires up. Here we go. Very simple. Should put it together, shall we? Well, what we're going to do first is install the um, resistors. What I'll do is uh, install the parts, then I'll solder them after. Makes the job a bit quicker, you see. First, 48k, this is R1. 48k. I'll try and keep the camera in focus. Or the camera cord, shall I say? Here's the first one. Right, second one is R2, which is also a 47k resistor. There we go. Alright, third resistor is R3, which is the 22K, which I believe goes just here. There we go. Fourth resistor is R4, also a 22K. I hope the um, pitch is not too dark. There we go, there's four resistors in. Alright, R5 is the 39k resistor. Going to the um, the base of the transistor. Sorry. Okay, that's five of them in. The last resistor is R6, the 100R. Now if you can't get hold of an 100R resistor, you can use you can only use a 470R, anything like that. Anything up to about 470. And resist that. There we go, what we'll do now is solder them light in. Okay, we're just going to solder in the six resistors. Not normally where I solder, but it's what I've got to do when I'm leaning over my camcorder and various other things. But there's um, six of them soldered in. Right. 
Okay, next job is to solder in uh, the nine caps. What I'm going to do is start with the ceramic caps. I'm going to start with C1, which is A1N. It doesn't take very long to do these. I'll put one of these together for no, 10 minutes. If you're just dying out, like a lot of my subscribers are, you know, there's no rush. Take you half hour and an hour a lot. Um, C2 is, all, is also an, um, a one in. Apologise if my uh, man's getting in the way. I know my, my, my nails are a bit long, but when you're working with electronics, like this, you do need you do need your nails. Right, that's the second one in. Right. C three is also a one in. Oops. Which goes out. The last one in is that's C five, is it? C four, sorry. Oh no, what am I doing? I apologise for that. What we'll do? We'll install the last one in, which is C six, which goes just out. do C7 next which is the 10PF which goes across the um, emitter and collector of the only transistor which goes just here now this value is critical to the circuit so you'll need this to be a 10PF and same applies to the next one which is C8 which is 33 PF right, which just goes out so this is C8 These ones, these ones got to go the right way around. Oh, is it focused? Is it? Yeah. Okay. God, which one was that one now? That was C5, I believe. Next one is C4. There we go. Okay, last one. C9, 47 UF. Now this can be any value from 1 UF up to maybe 200. It's only going across the battery just to keep the circuit tightish. Okay, they're all, they're all in place. What we'll do now is solder them in next. Okay, next we're going to um, solder in the um, caps. 
Now when you do solder to these board, bare copper boards, just make sure you use plenty of this stuff flux, because it doesn't help. Alright, let's get them laid. So all the caps in now, looking okay. Right, the next part we're going to install is the, the trimmer for adjusting the frequency. Goes in there. Make sure they don't touch. Get a bit close if you're um, pushing them in towards each other. Plenty of flux. Oh, I should have held this down without um, the tweezers, but being lazy. There we go. Call next. I oh, should put the call in, shall we? This is a five turn wrapped around a three diameter, a three millimeter diameter drill bit. Uh, this will give a frequency range from about 88, 90 to 110, 112 megahertz. Now, if you use a four turn coil, we'll get a frequency start about 75 megahertz and going up to about 105, something like that. Not the best way of soldering, but the shiny how uh, easy it is to build a single transistor uh, FN transmitter. Cool. Well, next is the um, only transistor we've got in this circuit. Now, I build these with um, two or three transistors. You can put on a buffer or an amplifier stage on. But the way I'm going to design this circuit, I'm not going to tap the antenna off the collector side. What I'm going to do here we go, is I'll be taking the antenna off the second turn of the coil. Now, that keeps the antenna away from the highly sensitive transistor collector making this circuit much much more stable than if I tap the antenna off the um, collector um, and what it does I mean you can pick this up you can um, hold it in your hands you can hold the antenna you can hold the uh, battery and the frequency stays rock solid I mean it doesn't move at all quite amazing really For a single transistor circuit, it's amazingly stable, and that's because we're tapping the antenna off, like I say, the, um, the coil. Left is enough. Well, 
mixed. Here's our audio input. This is stereo input, but obviously a mono transmitter. They both end up connecting to the base in a mono way. No, oh, plenty of flux. Right. Not a lot left now, is there? Okay, only a couple of items left to do now. So what I want to do next is the battery connector. to do this. So what I have to do is solder the tip first, which I don't really like doing. But it does the job. Antenna next. Alright, last item now is antenna. Now as I explained earlier, I'm taking the antenna off the second turn of the coil, which is just there. Let's zoom in a bit. Oh, wrong way. Alright, so I'm going to take the antenna off this second turn here. Right, normally I would have a 10 pf. If you want full power, right, just put a 10 pf across here, and there's your output for the antenna. Right, so it comes from the transistor collector. The output, the RF output, comes across the 10 p and out. Right, what I'm going to be doing right to make this transmitter a lot, lot more stable. You wouldn't believe how stable it is doing it this this way, but you lose about 40, 50 percent RF power. I mean, if if I do it the normal way. Good for the 10 pf. I'll get about I don't know, 1000, 12, 1300 foot with the, using my car, you know, FM radio. Obviously, it's going to be reduced using it this way, but that's the way I'm going to be building it for this video. No, I need free hands again. So, what I'll do, I'll try and I've tinned the coil as you can see. Bang on, all I've got to do now is tie the um, cables up with a plastic tie, job done. Well, transmitter's all done now. Don't look too bad, does it? So, audio input. You can take an input from your mobile phone, MP3 player, anything. Not bad sound then. Not doing better. But I'm um, soldering while working over a light and a camcorder and various other things. It's quite difficult. Still okay though, isn't it? Alright, next we'll test it.
Okay, after all that, does it work? Now you might have seen this on previous videos, it's my frequency counter. I've wrapped it around the antenna because I want to pull it towards you. If we get a frequency, alright? So plug the battery in. I'm sure you're going to adjust. Okay, here we go. Oh, 97.5 megahertz, it's saying. Do you have a butcher's? Something like that, 96 is it, point 8. I don't know that frequency around there is occupied, so what I'll do, I'll move that up to about 103.4, which I know is not used around here. That's it, 103.6, move the back a bit. No, that's too much. Oh, I do, I think we're around about there. 103.2 is it? Should we try and get on three, shall we? That'd be a bit awkward. Well, that'll do some. One out three point three. And bang on. So it now works. So what we'll do now? That's cool. Aha. Uh -huh. About one out three point four. That is, isn't it? Alright, now what I'll do, I'll plug um, some music in. It won't be anything you're familiar with, for obvious reasons, uh, copyright laws on YouTube. Cool. Sounds good, doesn't it? Like I say, I mean, this leads, I think this leads, it's about 15 foot, it's a big one, I've lost my short one, and you can see, there's no effect on frequency, and touch a battery, wow, look at that, as long as you don't touch the circuit, that's oscillating, yeah, Battery light. Stop lying. Cool, I'll grab the antenna. Look at that. Still playing. I think the song's just finished. Unbelievably stable for a single transistor design. Okay. You can hold everything. Oh, that's near the uh, oscillator. Oh, cool. You probably think, turn that rubbish off, but like I say, I can't play any chart music or anything like that. Oh, back to that song again. Now we'll go upstairs and see if we can tune into a radio. Pull the lid Let me wine kit, making me own wine. My weights, not to get fit. My bike. Alright, here we go. Focus. There we go. Just turn the light on. I'm not sure why that ain't focusing. It normally does.
Full signal. That build it itself, not hard to do. Very simple transmitter, single transistor. Um, 22 parts, I think they were. If you've not um, subscribed to my channel on YouTube, please do so. It's the sort of thing I do these videos. Well, hope you enjoyed that. Thank <laughs> you.